So if you own a rabbit or guinea pig or chinchilla, one term that you've probably heard us talk about or maybe your veterinarian has mentioned is what's called the hindgut. And the hindgut is a very unique anatomical component of a lot of our small herbivore species. And it mostly focuses on the cecum and the large intestine. And within that anatomical system, there's also a really unique physiological trait referred to as a colonic separation mechanism. We're gonna look at this little video, starting with the rabbit, to look at not only how the hindgut functions, but specifically looking at the colonic separation mechanism of the rabbit, which is referred to as the washback mechanism. So real quick anatomically before we get going, the white you can see here is the small intestine, the big organ you can see here is the cecum, and then here is our large intestine. So we're gonna go ahead and start get this animation going and look at the movement of fiber throughout the GI tract of the hindgut of the rabbit. Okay, so let's start up here looking at the movement of fiber. And again, remember there's very little, if any, fiber degradation in the proximal part, the stomach or the small intestine, of most of our small herbivore species. So the stomach lives here, here's our small intestine. And what we wanna focus on is the two different lengths of fiber that you can see. The green pieces are larger particle lengths of fiber in length, and the small kind of yellow pieces are shorter particle lengths of fiber. So fiber is racing its way down the small intestine past the ileocecal valve, and specifically in the rabbit, past the sacculus rotundus, which is a dilation of the distal end of the ileum associated with basically immunological function. And all of this fiber is being dumped into the large volume here, into the large cecum you can see. Huge component of the rabbit's GI tract, upwards of 40% of its overall GI volume. So all of this fiber is being dispersed throughout the entire length of the cecum because what lives in that cecum is heat, moisture, and especially, and most importantly, microbiome or bacteria. And they're really the workers, really the drivers of bacterial fermentation, which is the breakdown of fiber. Now, as this process accelerates, the body adds water to that system, and that accelerates the microbial functionality to break down fiber. And the output of microbial fermentation of fiber is volatile fatty acids. That is energy for all of our hindgut fermenters. That is absorbed directly across the wall of the cecum. As we begin to see this fiber fermentation process accelerate, we begin to see particles of fiber of both lengths move into the large intestine. This is where the colonic separation mechanism, and in rabbits specifically, the washback colonic separation mechanism occurs. The fusi coli right here controls this mechanism, but what you'll see is large particles of fiber moving in a normal grade direction, so normal direction or peristalsis, down the descending colon, out the back door to make poop. That's all the big pieces of fiber moving out of the system, the, the lengths of fiber that the rabbit really can't effectively ferment. But at the same time, the small particles of fiber, mucus and bacteria, other small soluble particles, move to the periphery of the ascending colon into these little lateral pouches referred to as hofstri. That is where the clonic separation mechanism separates those particles and moves them retrograde, so opposite direction, back up into the cecum. So again, the washback mechanism of the rabbit separates large particles of fiber, moves them out the back door, pulls off the important nutrients, but gets that long-stranded fiber out of the system, the fiber that the rabbit cannot truly effectively ferment, again, the bacteria, but concentrates the digestive effort on the small soluble particles in the cecum. So we begin to see more and more fiber fermentation driven by microbiome in the cecum that again, the byproduct of that are volatile fatty acids. Now, as this process moves, more volatile fatty acids are absorbed, and then we begin to see water leaving the cecum as well, which begins to concentrate the contents of that cecum. The fusi coli right here controls that colonic separation mechanism and stimulates the production of cecotrophs. That is all important nutrients, volatile fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins and minerals, hydration, and even microbiome. Those are packaged up into cecotrophs or night stools and move in a normal grade fashion rapidly out the back door. The rabbit then re-ingests those and then takes those key nutrients back upstairs. Here's the GABA cells putting mucus out the back door. The cecotroph goes, the rabbit re-ingests that cecotroph and all of those essential nutrients are absorbed.